Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Codename Vulture, Order of the Condor, Book 1, by Maya Daniels and Sylvia Black, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1, Danielle. It's always the small things that screw us over. Those subtle but insignificant at the time actions or encounters that change things in such a drastic way that we don't know what's up or down anymore. They leave us drifting like tumbleweeds through life while shaking the foundations of everything we think we are or wish we can be. Like a vicious storm, they sweep through our existence, leaving broken pieces of everything we think we know all around us, shredding our palms to make us bleed while we attempt to piece everything together with shaking hands. That way we can convince ourselves that everything is fine. Nothing ever is, but we lie to ourselves better than anyone ever could. The auctioneer brings the gavel down, hitting the wooden podium with such force that a bang reverberates throughout the entire art gallery, making me flinch. Dragging myself out of the random thoughts swishing through my head like a premonition, I take a calming breath. A thrill of anticipation runs through me as I wait, glancing around at those gathered and barely able to contain my excitement. I should focus on the reason I'm here, not on ridiculous wayward ideas about the meaning of life. The crowd has dwindled over the last couple of hours since most came to bid on paintings, but I know what's coming soon. My gaze darts randomly over the heads of those present, not stopping on anyone in particular. The artifact that most curators can only dream of having in their museums is perched in front of all of us as if daring us to test fate and own it. But soon, soon it will be mine. The bidding starts at a steep $39,500,000, a bargain for the rare relic that holds the richest of history. Much to my delight, only a few are privy to it due to the short notice of the event. A purposeful slight from the organizers, I'm sure. I barely contain my eye roll with that thought, like anyone with half a brain will believe that nonsense. I wait. <clears throat> and adrenaline thrums through my veins before I acknowledge the bid. Because of the last-minute decision to put the unverified relic on the list, the other world-renowned curators and collectors had no time to make it to the auction, and that has ensured that no one worth their credentials in the industry will even know it has changed hands until much later in the future. Well, after <laughs> I get my hands on it, that is. The corners of my lips twitch in glee. I take her at 39500 the auctioneer croons, his beady eyes rolling over us like a predator choosing his prey. Trying to hide my smugness, I hold my breath until my lungs burn, because just this once, no other collectors are swarming to outbid me for this treasure. None of them will care about it the way I will, and no one can convince me otherwise. <coughs> when I bring this back to my museum, everyone in New York City will have the privilege of seeing this magnificent beauty presented in the most regal of settings. A place fit for it. I can hardly hold myself back from darting forward and snatching it off the dais. Going once, going twice, and a droplet of sweat trickles down my vertebrae. Forty million dollars. The words are barely a murmur, but I hear them as if they were shouted in my ear, though the deep voice that spoke them is soft, calm, and more than a little ominous. Just like an executioner's axe before it swings. My heart stutters before dropping to the pit of my stomach and sending a wave of dread over me at the thought that someone else wanted this exquisite statue. I let the reality of what the bid means settle as I fight to calm the fluttering of my heartbeat. This man <coughs> is not your typical collector who is excited about adding another piece to his dusty shelves. I can feel it in my bones and then the shiver slithering up my spine. There is no need even to turn to know the owner of the gravelly low tone is directly behind me. Every breath he exhales grazes the tender skin of my neck like he is whispering a challenge in my ear. A sudden chill in the air causes me to tremble in my seat, so I pull my cardigan around my shoulders as the hairs on the back of my neck prickle from his nearness. Going once, going twice, and forty million five hundred thousand dollars I manage to croak too aware of the heat of his body closing the distance between us and invading my personal space as he leans in from behind. Going once, going twice, and 
I can hear the amusement in his voice when he doesn't waste time countering. <laughs> $50 million. Is this a joke to him? <coughs> My gasp echoes, mixing with many more from the others still present in the room. All the hope and excitement drains out of me and my body slumps in the chair, but I don't dare turn. This artifact would have been an incredible draw for the entire New York City Museum, yet there is no way I can take it with me now that he's hit the top of my budget. Going once, going twice, my heart hummers so hard against my chest my whole body rocks from it. And sold to the gentleman in the second row. Swallowing the lump, sitting like a fist at the back of my throat, I watched the rest of the patrons quickly disperse from the room while drowning in my defeat. I already know, even without looking, that the asshole who swooped in and stole Condora is no longer behind me. The minute he left, I could feel the absence of his presence no longer squeezing my lungs and preventing me from taking a full breath. My unseeing gaze sweeps over the small gallery and the faces of those in the archaeology industry who I know well. All the prominent museum curators, art collectors, and exclusive shop buyers from the city may not be in attendance, but not one of us would miss an auction sponsored by the illustrious Brandy and Arts. Those staring back at me are not small fish in the ocean, either. All of them are sharks, yet a bigger predator has swooped in and left us all dazed. I spy the six-foot-five-inch dark-haired jerk whose muscular frame is thrumming with power even beneath the custom tailored suit he wears. Standing across the room talking to no one other than my boss, he doesn't fool me with the relaxed set of his broad shoulders or the casual way his hands hang loose at his sides. Definitely not someone I've seen before, but I know his kind too well, the kind that takes whatever he wants without caring about the consequences, as if he can feel my eyes drilling a hole in the back of his head. He glances over his shoulder, and his dark penetrating irises lock intently on mine. <coughs> All the air is sucked out of my lungs. Trepidation rocks me to the marrow of my bones while I struggle to take a breath. Like a deer caught in a trap, panic surges through me and I whirl around with just one thought in mind. I need to get the hell out of here. A very irrational and outright ridiculous thought, but I can't fight it. The skirt of my pen suit swishes around my knees as I weave through the chairs toward Condora, hoping her beauty will calm me. <sighs> what in the world is ma the matter with me? <coughs> in my haste, I almost smack right into Kara, her hands grabbing my upper arms so we don't end up on the floor and embarrass ourselves. I lost her. Like I need to explain my actions, I gasp for air. I was outbid. How is this possible, Kara? No one knew about the history of the statue or that it'd be up for auction until the last minute. The pompous ass probably bid on the statue just because he had money to throw around. Anger is slowly replacing the panic. Don't take it too hard, Danielle. With a barely there shrug, she does her best to downplay what just happened. My palm itches with the need to slap her back to its sense, her senses. It's one of the rarest finds in the archaeological history. The fact that it ended up being auctioned at all was a fluke, as we both know. The worldwide the interest in this thing would have driven the price up fourfold otherwise. Well, you and I know that. With great effort, I managed to push the words through her clenched teeth. But no one else did. There was no time to advertise it, and you haven't even had a chance to examine it yet. <coughs> Keeping my tone low, everything I say comes out as a hiss. Another shrug from Kara dismisses my frustration. Water under the bridge, my friend. These things happen in auctions. Better luck next time, right? My hand flops toward the entrance of the secluded room where the auction takes action took place, which leads to the back office where my bestie typically works. Her authentication of finds uncovered by archaeologists all over the world is paramount to our museum and why we are at the top of the pyramid in the industry. Don't you have a mummy to unwrap or something useful to do instead of lecturing me on auctions? Her laugh makes her red curls bounce around her slim shoulders. Don't be such a sorry loser, Danielle. He outbed you fair and square. The humor drains from her and she gives me a pointed look. You have to admit that even at the low end, you were taking a chance on the authenticity. Edmund collected all kinds of things. He was eccentric, my friend. Her pointer finger swirls around her temple. A seriously strange character, sure, especially with him living in that old mansion and not changing a thing inside or out. All those stories he droned on about when he told you about the statue could have been made up or about a totally different statue. She shakes her head, 
her gaze filling with pity for poor Edmund. Who knows? Forehead pinching, I scowl at my feet. He wasn't just a nice old man, and you know it. I appreciate you trying to make me feel better, but I know in my bones that statue should have stayed with us. Edmund spent hours looking at the collections with me. Every single one of his stories matched my research notes, word for word. I'm telling you, the guy knew his stuff. He was friendly enough, but all he ever wanted to talk about was vampire lore. Lips twisting in a grimace, Kara snorts derisively. Seriously, Danielle, the guy needed a life. He was a little odd sometimes, I'll give you that, but he was also very passionate about his interests. With one eyebrow raised, I wait until she reluctantly nods in agreement. I guess it doesn't really matter now. He's gone. The statue is sold, and all we can do is move on. Not even I believe my nonchalance about the whole thing. Are you going to Edmund's estate sale tomorrow? Definitely. There may be stuff that didn't make the cut for the collector's auction. We still want in the museum. I plan to get there early to scout things out. Hopefully the ass wipe with big pockets isn't there too. Want to join me? Kara's eyes glitter when she grins at me. What do you think? It's either hang out with you or hang out with centuries old and dead things. It's a no-brainer, really. I find myself smiling back at her. <coughs> I'll take a look around at the other items that sold before they get picked up. Meet you at the coffee shop down the street when you're done. Drowning my sorrows in a T-Rex-sized cup of caramel macchiato sounds like heaven. Not chai tea. Girl, it must have been love at first sight. I'll give you some time alone with Condora. Snickering under her, under her breath, she swats my arm. You'll feel better tomorrow. We'll find a few things at the sale to remind you of old Edmund. I force a tilt to my lips for her sake. Being best friends from third grade, the lady knows me better than anyone ever has or ever will. When her swaying hips and red curls disappear through the entrance, I turn my attention to the statue. The exhibit is exquisite. A dark, aged, carved bone that has been preserved by the salt of the sea. It's an exact image of the first bird of prey, and according to Edmund, the key to the world of the condor. The Lord says, mated to the ruler of all condors, Condora died at childbirth and took the magical secrets of the species with her to her grave. This statue was created in her image to honor the secrets lost. I let the essence of its spirit soak in me in with a deep breath, inhaling the vibes that emanate through the air between us. It calls to me just like when I saw Condora for the first time. I watch her now the same, hoping for one more chance to hear her voice. But her eyes don't light up like when I was standing at Edmund's mansion. Or, you were going crazy, Danielle. There is that. I push away the snarky voice in my head. Damn it. If only I had more time and that asswipe hadn't snatched her from right under my nose. Why am I a conduit for these who have secrets to tell, wishes to convey, or things to redeem? I'll never know. It's been something I've struggled with my entire life, but somehow Edmund claimed he knew the answer. He told me it's a calling to help anyone from the spirit world. Now I'll never know the secrets of the statue or give her a place in the museum fitting of the respect Edmund wanted. Because of the asshole. A pang stabs me in the center of my chest as I stare at it unblinkingly. The energy increases around the beautiful statue as though it's struggling to tell me something. Panting, I strain to catch something, anything really, knowing that at any minute she'll, she'll disappear, carrying all the secrets she wants to convey. The air thrums with an awareness that threatens to buckle my knees. I sense him without the need to see him. Danger wraps around me, along with the same feeling of molten heat from before. But this time, there's also the intensity of his single-minded attention warming me from behind. His breath prickles the back of my neck, sending a shiver of shock, apprehension, and exhilaration down my spine. Something sharp tickles the skin under my ear, and my blood turns to ice. Don't worry, Danielle. You two will soon be re... <laughs> reunited. <coughs> My heart stops at his whisper, but I don't dare move. An undeniable call from one little bird to another, is it not? And I will have you in an ornate cage deserving of me, my little bird, sooner than you think. When I whirl around with my hand raised high to slap him, I'm staring at an empty room. He is gone. <laughs>